So I'm going to turn this over to Chip and uh, let him do his thing. Thank you. Well, Mike, you're, you're right there. Just, just check it. Yeah, we got it. You got me all zeroed in, do you? Zero in. You've seen this before. It's been fun. Um, well, I was making these for, for craft shows and uh, different things, selling a lot of them. This is a Dick, Dick Singh design, this little headlight looking thing. And I just got to thinking, you know, it's got to be a wedge. Because you turn this round and you stick it against the disc sander, the belt sander, you know, right? And it just doesn't look nice and polished and pretty. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a way to do this. So finally, figured out, uh, I'll show you my technique here for using my number one jaws to hold these clocks at an angle and turn up the bottom on it. Because it's just a whole lot more fun to turn it than to take it to the bandsaw. You could take it to the bandsaw and you could do a lot of things, right? But uh, so this is what I'm going to do tonight. You see you can get your clocks in different sizes. You can do a lot of different things. Oh, but mostly I just wanted to uh, get some different techniques and different ideas and see where you all can go with it. I want to come back and see lots of things. Okay. Got it. You hear me breathe and everything. <laughs> Ooh. And it's just warm enough, I don't think I'm going to wear a smock. So let's get started. It's going to take me a minute to get used to this. So I'm going to start out with the uh, block. This is uh, quarter saw on white oak. And I'm going to get caught right away. So we'll do something different there. And I did not bring a pair of scissors. Sharp knife will work. I wish mine were sharp. Okay, this is the one-way chuck, uh, stronghold chuck with the number one jaws. And what we're going to do is I've cut some little slivers of uh, just any waste wood would work. And these happen, I laid my bandsaw over and cut these at 10 degrees. So somewhere between 10 and 15 degrees, depending on how much you want that to lay back. You know, well, when you look at a clock, usually if it's on a desk or even on a shelf, you want it kind of laid back in that orientation. What we're going to do, get the key and open this up just a hair. We're going to put this in here and we're going to put these wedges in such a way that it holds the work at an angle. Okay? Now, just because Mike's in the front row here, we'll, we'll use a little double sided tape for a little extra. <laughs> now, um, this is five quarters, so it's, it's just a hair over an inch. Uh, these jaws won't open up much wider than that. Uh, you could not go with. Uh, a much bigger piece. I hope I have a safety pin. I don't have a safety pin in. <laughs> well, now I messed them all up, so to make sure they come back to center. If you want to make sure you do have your safety pin in, uh, the number four jaw of the stronghold or the one way chucks holds the safety pin. Now you can get slightly more if you go with the uh, the 
the smooth jaws instead of the serrated jaws, you can get slightly larger in there. So this is just double-sided tape. This is uh, Turner's tape, or what do they call it? Uh, compression tape. It's really designed to put it in the vise. But our chuck is a vise, right? Now, this is going to sit in such an orientation that I'm bumbling, Mike, what's going on? When we finish, we're going to end up cutting this side off. Okay, so this will be the back. And this is going to be the front. So the back, I always like to pick the prettiest side because I'm going to put all kinds of doodads on the front. But I want the back to be the prettiest side. Now, does it matter if it's centered up in there or not? It does. We're going to get that centered up. So I'm going to put one piece here at the very bottom. Stick it in there. Put a little tape on another piece here. My knife was sharp, it would work better. <laughs> you got music here. That's great. I was doing this demonstration in Denver. And uh, in the middle of the demonstration, uh, some music came on. What? What's going on? There was a music store next door. What's that now? It's like you need a piece of tape on your back to hold that wire. To hold that wire? Yeah. Okay, so the chuck here has a, a 5 to 1 holding capacity. Is if you put torsion on it, it is going to put five times as much torsion to hold your wood in place. I do want this fairly well centered, so I'm double checking that. And I got pretty darn lucky there. You're going to take me up, aren't you? Yep. Oh, you're a good man. Now, one way, is that kind of like Festool and woodworking? Is that what that? One way uh, on that chart. Mm -hmm. Is that kind of like Festool? <laughs> More or less, yes. Yeah. It has the Festool price tag. That's uh, it, that's the one. No, it's, they're pretty reasonably priced for what they are. And you do get a very good uh, quality. Does everybody know Time and Clay, uh, the founder of One Way? He's passed on now. But he was actually. Uh, an engineer that uh, dealt with brakes on airplanes. So heat and vibration were the two things he had to deal with the most. And that's what we deal with in wood turning. And he brought his expertise to uh, his hobby and made it into a business there. Okay. So I am going to... Mark my center point because it makes it a little easier. To see where to set the tool rest for height. Okay. Oops. Yeah, I'm gonna get used to this. 
And then I'm going to go home and I'm going to curse you guys thinking, oh, why do I keep reaching on the wrong side of the banjo? So I consider this uh, detail work, so I'm going to use my spindle gouge for everything here. And I'll step to the side and turn it on. Okay, so anytime you're doing any offset turning, speed is your friend, so as, as fast as you're comfortable with. Now normally if you put a white piece of paper down here, it's easier to see because you're really cutting that ghost, you know. So we're not quite there yet. I think I'll lower this just a hair. Make it a little easier to come to that center point. And the one thing I do want to keep an eye on as I do this is that I, I get a good flat cut. And I am not. Can you see that? So I got a little concave there I need to work on. Get good and flat. Too tight to the flywheel as is, is, is it's uh, stopping. Oh, <laughs> Not quite, but very close. So we're getting there again. I've got a little concave there, so I gotta work on my outside edges. Just the very outside wing now. You could turn it backwards. Just to pull that outside. That's got me pretty darn flat there. Except for the very nib in the center. The nib's always the hardest part, right? Okay, 
Okay, so I'm using my spindle gouge. I got a pretty clean cut there, and I'm pretty flat, so I'm pretty happy with that. So now I've got my 10 degree angle. Okay. Now I don't want to sand that. I don't know if this finger, no. So. Oh, chicken. I know, I know. So. That's all I got to say is I love you, man. Don't do that. I am going to mark it here at the very outside edge of it. Okay. Now most of this <laughs> is going to go away. Is you want to grab one of those? Oh, just this one. Up. Yeah, that'd be fine. Okay. So in this orientation, all right, most of this around the outside is going to end up going away. So rather than sand, I'm just going to put some decorative lines there. I'm going to hide any tool marks I have. I don't have much, but. Uh, do that real quick. And I don't want it to come through the front because you wouldn't want to see that tool mark from the front. Right? So, this is a fluted parting tool. And I'm going to use it upside down and I'm going to use it as if it were a beading tool. Now, your camera's above, you can't see that way, but... Uh, yeah, over there. Okay, oh, there you go. So now any flaws I had from my uh, tool marks are disguised or hidden from me there. I don't have to try to sand that. Okay. So, that was exciting. Are you you're still good with everything? Hey, I have you I, I didn't see your eyes get big, so <laughs> I think we're okay. He hasn't had to jump yet. <laughs> He's poised to jump out of the lake. <laughs> now this is the part where we're going to do a little measuring. Now we did make sure we had that pretty well centered. Okay. But now we're going to do a little more measuring. And the hardest part is getting this tape to let loose because uh, you know usually you don't want it to let loose. The only thing more fun than this is when you forget the putty knife. <laughs> and you try to use a chisel? Uh, pocket knife. <laughs> Should work hot milk glue work there? You know it probably would. It probably would. Oh, I was telling you about the demo I did. I did this in uh, Denver, and there was a music store next door. Has anybody been to the Denver Woodturners or the Front Range, they call themselves? Well, it's in a strip mall in, a, in the basement of a Rockler shop. And there's a music store next door, the kind of place where, you know, a high school student would go pick up an instrument, that kind of thing. Didn't think much about it. In the middle of my demo, all of a sudden, this music comes on. Okay, what? You guys always play music? You want me to dance too? Well, apparently, the music store next door has classes at night in pole dancing. <laughs> yeah, I tried to end the demo right then, but they wouldn't let me. Okay. So, it's next we're... Pole dancing kind of like spindle work? The spindle work, exactly. <laughs> they, they must have been a pole lathe. And the music helped them keep the tempo. Right? Right? Where's Danny? Right? Would that help if you had music where you are using that treadle lathe? Yeah. 
Now, I do want to show you this. I wrote an article on, on this, and I showed it to uh, the editor of, of Wood Turning Magazine when I was in Utah. And he, he looked at it and said, I could, I could use this. He says, but figure out a way if you didn't have that chuck how you do it. And I'm thinking, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out how to use the chuck to do it. So. Uh, one night at the Wood Turners up north, one of the guys and I were thinking and, and drawing on the board and uh, before the meeting started and during the meeting, another one of the guys that's an engineer was looking at, at our drawings there, took pity on me and he went home and drew this up and sent me the uh, pictures on, on how to make it. So if you did not have that chuck, uh, um, you can use the Vic Mark chuck. I don't think a Nova chuck will open wide enough to do this. But this is an alternative you could use. Just got four bolts back here. And you slide your wood in in that fashion. Okay, So that's your blank right there. You can slide it in here. Of course, you'd have to measure from each side and then tighten down your bolts here. Now, I did have to put a little lead weight in it to offset um, the weight of the poplar. And since this is a butt joint to a face joint, I did glue and screw it. Okay. But that's an alternative you could you could do the same thing. So this got me thinking you could do even more. We got uh, some family members that play a lot of hockey. I'm thinking well, you could put a hockey puck in there and you could turn that. You could. This opens up a lot more opportunities that I haven't uh, played with yet, but uh, I'll be sure to bring some things. So that gives you an idea. Now I have to put this in my article so I can send it off to it. Okay. For the next step, I'm going to the number three jaws. I'm going to grip it in this fashion. I don't want to mar this foot. I ended up pulling it up in such a way that I'll have to take at least one jaw off of here. Now, if you're using a mini lathe, you want to take two jaws off because you want to keep it balanced. Okay. So let's do a quick measuring here. The most important place we've got to worry about on the back here are these two points in the back. Because when it sits here, that's the point that's keeping it from falling over backwards, right? So you can't turn these two points away. If you drew a triangle here, you'd see what the support is that's holding it. So it has to be centered around those two points. So I'm going to draw two lines here, and I have one that I've drawn on here. You guys can take a, a peek at while I'm doing this to get an idea of what I'm doing. But I'm measuring those two points, the most important thing I've got. So I'm measuring from there to the front. Now if I measured well when I initially put this in the chuck, the center should be the center. But just in case, I'm centering off those two points. Is everybody with me so far? Okay, so I'm worried about those two points in the back, so I've transferred those two lines to the front. And I should have used a magic marker that was a little darker so it was easier to see. But that is giving me... Ex 
exactly two inches. Couldn't have done that again if I tried. So exactly one inch is my center. Okay, so that's my center line. All right. So I'm going to take my handy dandy compass. Measure from my center line. Is it big enough? Out to the edge, which should be the same on both sides, and luckily it is. So then I'm going to come down to this bottom point. Strike an arc. Come down to the bottom of this line. It's a good thing Kent's not here. Kent would be saying, can you just shut up and turn already? <laughs> Does everybody know Kent? I love Ken. He's like a brother to me. Okay, so that marks the center of my piece. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's good and marked well. And then I'm going to draw around the outside there. And that's going to be the finished product. Okay. So, as I mentioned before, now we need to, and of course I, we need to take one, one chuck off, one jaw off here. You don't want to take your number four off, because there again, that's your safety pin, right? So I'm really going to be holding it with just two jaws. Okay. So I'm holding it in this fashion. Okay. Now again, if you're using a mini lathe, take that second jaw off there and just leave two on. Keep yourself balanced. I think this lathe will be heavy enough, we don't have to worry about that. And since I have my center point marked, I can use that to my advantage here. And there I am. So, chuck key. You can never have enough room for stop, right? Are you just holding the side of those jaws? I'm just holding it with two jaws on the outside edge. Mm -hmm. And really the lower half of that jaw is just barely got a grip on the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty close, pretty close. I think it's tight enough. You think so? I think so. Yeah, we'll, move that. <laughs> we'll, take, we'll take this away just in case. Then, uh, <laughs> all right, so we need to drill the recess where the clock will be. And this is a one and three eighths inch Forstner bit. bring my keyless chuck. We didn't want to make it look too easy, right? Okay, so now we need to slow things down a bit. Just check and see how much it's going to wobble. Moving. 
that should be sufficient. I always like to leave, if you've got the room, if you've got the thickness in the wood, I always like to leave enough room so you can stuff the instructions behind. You know? So somebody needs to replace the battery, they actually have the instructions and they can see what size battery that actually is. Instructions on how to get the clock out. How to get the clock out. <laughs> I've got a tool for that too. Don't let me forget to show you that. That tool took a lot of thought as well. Does anybody eat at Chick fil A? I like to go to Chick fil A and get a lunch, right? And I always order a salad, and they always give you a knife with your salad. I never figure out what you use the knife for. Well, finally I figured out, you cut it off, and you take it to your belt sander, and you get a handy dang little putting knife there that you can take your clock out without damaging it. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I told you I had a secret for that. All right. Well, just because it's you, Mike, I'll go ahead and put this back in. Oh, you're a sweetheart. <laughs> Are you going to call my wife later and tell her that? <laughs> Fine. That'd be good. Now, there's no reason for me not to run out some quill. I don't know how long the quill is in this particular machine. We're going to find out. Wow. It's long. It's a long one, huh? Probably four inch. There's three and three quarter. So that at least gives us some room to work here. Right? All right. I always keep my banjo as perpendicular as possible to give me as much strength. And then adjust my tool rest at the angle. But by keeping this perpendicular to the bed, as much strength as I can get out of it. Restoring a lathe from the 1880s, it doesn't give you any choice. The uh, banjo is always perpendicular to the lathe. Now I'm just getting rid of waste. I uh, didn't need to make this board nearly as long as I did. You can see I've got a lot of material remover coming out of this line here. Now eventually I get past this sticking out, I can only cut half the distance because I'll run into my jaws, right? Time I was getting pretty close to those jaws, it felt like, but I'm still a ways off from them. Did you ever get too close? Have I ever gotten too close to it? Let's see, are there any nicks in there? Yeah, one nick right there. Yeah, I think maybe, maybe once. It's much harder on the tool than it yeah. is on the, the jaw. Yeah, and it probably jerks you pretty hard. Yeah, I'll always keep a light, a light touch there. Was not in there. Okay, so this jaw is not doing anything, so it's, it's rattling. Okay, and I listen very carefully whenever I turn, and if I hear anything unusual, I always stop to check 
and I did not stop to think that jaw's loose. So it makes a little bit of noise, but it's all good. Okay. Okay. Sneaking up on my line, how am I doing there? Pretty close. I still have a flat on each side, so I've got a little further to go. And I could move my tool rest up, it would be a wise thing to do. Okay, I can kind of clean this up a little bit. Not that it buys too much. Let's see how close we are there. Yeah. Another sixteenth to go. So I'm gonna bring this around, bring it up closer. You're not turning the taper, are you? You're going no, straight. I'm going straight. You could do pretty much anything you want on this front half, okay? Because it's that back half that I'm most concerned about. Lots of time, lots of time. Back half that I'm most concerned about, okay? I can turn the back concave, but I don't want to turn it convex, because if I turn around these two points, I'm in trouble. But I can do any shaping on the front I want. Oh, it's this bar that's rattling. I don't know if it was something. Not the job. Well, as it came up to speed, I knew it couldn't be that one job because some physical force would throw it out. Okay, just a twinge. I was off centered just ever so little. Okay, about a sixty-fourth. Okay, well, I'm going to do this and nobody will know. I'm going to feel it real carefully here, make sure I pass that. It is pick on my knife. Okay, so. The front face is defined. <coughs> and you know you always take this out when you're going to do any other turning because you only hit your elbow on it once. Except I've done it more than once, but we'll pretend. It teaches you. Didn't learn the first time. Yeah. Once in a while you forget and you have to relearn things. It hurt bad enough the first time. <laughs> it heals up and then you do it again. Alright. So now we get to make any shapes, any doodahs, anything we want here. Yeah, come on. There you go. Let go there. So I just like to uh, just use a parting tool and, and sink in the face so when you look across it, the clock is, is flush, okay, rather than being proud. So. Just a simple plunge cut. Now 
Now it's fighting me a little bit because my tool rest needs to be higher. So anytime you make a, a cut like that into a round surface, the outside of that is going to come around and hit the bottom of your tool. Okay, so you always want to be a little high, a little above center. And I was not there, so it was fighting me just a little bit. And that will clean it up quite a bit there. Now the clock itself, oops, oops, oh that's one of those high dollar tools I was telling you about. Bill me. Okay. <laughs> that's a Chick-fil-A salad to you, buddy. <laughs> okay, so it overhangs a bit, right? This outside, has everybody seen these before, these little fit-ups? So I need to make sure this is light enough that I can get that little tool in there to change it if I wanted to. So I went just a hair wider. Okay. Now this is an interesting tool. I, somebody came to town and was telling us about this tool. and. It was talking about how you can't turn a bead on a face work, which just shocked me because I've been doing it for years. But I just, it's what they said. I bought the tool. It is much, much easier. Has anybody seen these before, everybody? Where am I, where am I going? See that flute down the center of that tool? So you use it in this fashion with the flute down. And it's a beading tool. You come on in there. And wiggle back and forth a little bit as you come in. And it's going to give you a nice bead. Now, I really should. I've still got a flat spot on top. I really should slow things down a little bit. It is a scraper, it's working as a scraper. So scraper is the least efficient tool we have. And it will overheat as well. Okay. It gives me a real nice beat there. rocking and rolling just a little bit here. I should have taken that other jaw off of the chuck and it would be more balanced. This machine looks a little heavier than it is. But as long as you're moving with it, it just doesn't matter, right? Alright, so now I'm going to bring this back down it here and I'm just going to roll a large bead not a bead but a I'll roll this over Well. 
And you could fuss with this and, and put as much uh, into it as you wanted, as far as shape's concerned. Okay. The, it's the rear points I'm worried about. Ah, okay. Okay, so I can do anything I want on the front here. Okay. Okay, but you can see now where I didn't want my bottom rings to come through this front portion, right? So that's why I drew my line there. And I should have gone back and made one more pass to turn my line away. So now, if you're going to sand, now is the time because uh, once we get past this point, you won't be able to get back to this front surface to sand it. Slow things down to sand, all right? Heat and vibration of my enemies. Okay, so I've got that front edge there. It's grabbing my sandpaper away from me. Okay, if this is a reversible lathe, is this a reversible lathe? Yeah. Sure it is. <laughs> So every time you change sandpaper grits, you would want to reverse the lathe. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and sand the rest of this before I do that though. The idea is that right now, I'm just catching this one corner as it comes around. Right, so I'm knocking this corner off. I'm not knocking this corner off. So if I reverse the direction of the rotation each time, then I will theoretically equally knock the corners off and it will be less noticeable. What's that now? Right, right. The sandpaper does fold the grain over and if you turn it in the other direction then it folds it the other direction. Uh, not something you'd worry about a whole lot with this domestic wood, but you could get yourself into a softer wood and, and that definitely would be an issue. Okay, I've gotten a habit a long time ago of holding my sandpaper with two hands. I don't know why, a lot of times I hold one hand with the other, just to keep everything steady there. A little tiny tool mark right there, we'll just take it out over here and like this as well. Because it's always exciting to watch people sand, right? You bet, so now we'll flip directions. That was 180. Here's some 240. Now I promise once I get through with the face here, I won't sand anymore because I can sand the rest later. Okay, 320. What's that? Usually Mel just changes parts. He just says sand, sand, and puts a new part in. Oh. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mel. <laughs> This is where I'm supposed to come up with a good joke, eh? Right? <laughs> Let's see, mixed company jokes. That's the hardest, isn't it? Reverse again. And this 400 grit. Okay, so now we finish that up. We'll pull this out and now which way did I leave it running? I think I left it running the wrong direction. Then I did. Okay. 
so now we have choice. We can use, um, we can go back to our number one jaws. Or if you have one of these cute little things. Has anybody turn these clocks before? This is something I picked up years ago that I used to turn little pocket watches and that kind of thing. It's just a little expanding chuck that expands, to designed to expand into that one and three eighths inch hole. Okay. So you have a myriad of different ways to hold. Just go back with this one. This one's probably the best holding power. It's just that these, um, that face is not milled to be perfect, right? Well, it is supposed to be perfect until you hit it with a tool once or twice. <laughs> we'll see how perfect it is here. So I'm just going to expand into that. Well, if I went small enough, I could expand into it. A little safer. Mm -hmm. You like it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always uh, tighten up both holes. Those gears can get bound up in there, so. First try, that's pretty good, huh? All right, now this again, you could put any doodahs or whatnots uh, on the back face itself. You can concave it if you want to, but you got to protect these two little corners here. So we can't really convex it. I do have just a hair tear out there, so I am going to take a nice cut off of it all the way across. But I'll do that after I get rid of some of this waste. You guys are awful quiet. I'm used to hecklers. So friends are four. <laughs> okay, so it's just like eating an elephant one bite at a time. Tool rest of ways, you want to move up to it. So, I did have a lot of waste wood here. I could have uh, stood to make that block a half inch shorter, but I would have uh, finished the demo to it a little bit. So. face <clears throat> so it is just a hair off so I'm going to cut from the other direction which the chuck is in the way to do but we'll do it anyway That's what takes the longest. Number two is execution. Okay. And number three is figuring out how to, how to fix and mess up from the execution. Ah. In this case, uh, we just won't mess up. You know, we'll be all right. Okay, that will sand out. Speed is your friend there again. 
The faster I turn, the less I have to worry about things. I really don't want to cut to that face because so I don't want to spray out any grain across that front face. So I'll just ease out of that cut there. Cut a little, couple of little dude dads, nobody will know. They'll be able to they'll sand out. Okay, so now I've got my torn grain down here from when it was rotating the other direction. So I'll just skim that face as well. Now, has anybody found a low-profile spindle gouge that Carter put out? I was playing with it a little bit. Okay, it's still a spindle gouge. Where am I? It's still a spindle gouge, but the wings are cut back a little bit. Can you see that? Okay. But I don't know if it's going to work on this or not because there's some inherent vibration here that we've kind of got to fight starting out here. But let's see what it does. In theory, it should give you a very smooth cut. And a relatively smooth cut there. Not a deep enough cut to get rid of the uh, out there. Could you use a negative break spray for that? You could, absolutely. You always get a cleaner cut with a cutting tool than with a scraping tool. So, um, you know, if you can cut, that's the best option. And I had one of those, oh, I passed it around and I you got it right there. Oh, it came back. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. And then you just fit that in there. The hardest part of the whole project is getting the six at the bottom and the 12 at the top, right? They give you some ideas for different ways to use your chuck, maybe trying something a little different. You sure your fancy dancy tool will still take that out of there? What's that now? You sure your fancy dancy tool will still oh, take that out of there? Oh, well, yeah, you gotta throw it on the floor first, but it'll do it. It's a high dollar fancy dancy tool. <laughs> <laughs> You can afford. Yeah, you can afford to uh, give one of those away with the sale of the clocks there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> have any questions? You guys are way too quiet. Mesmerized. Mesmerized or scared? I'm not sure. Very good. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Let's give it a big hand.